So from the standpoint of, of actually measuring off this forge, let's take for example that we clipped this site and it weighed 4,000 pounds. So we, with that calculation, we had 4,000 pounds of, of, of dry forage here per acre. Okay. Uh, you know, if you have 4,000 pounds, how much of that would you actually use for grazing? When we, when we, when we typically set stocking rates, most of us have heard the old adage, take half, leave half. Well, a lot of that work came from the 1950s. A gentleman named Frank Kreider did a study uh, that basically showed us that from the standpoint of plant health, if we graze 50% of the total production, then we're not going to stop any root development. Now, we've been in three years of drought, so I don't want to put any more added pressure on these plants to where we stop actual root development. Most perennial plants like this little blue stem are gonna slough a third of their roots every year just because they're a perennial warm season grass. That's what they do. But I don't wanna put any more additional pressure on it to stop that root development. That root development is really what's gonna help that plant become and be able to, to respond in the in the next year in the spring. So, so we won't wanna hinder that. However, there are other other critters, if you will, that use this plant that, other than the cow. How many grasshoppers did we have last year? Uh, we had, there was a lot of them. We had a lot. Grasshoppers, rabbits, environmental losses due to trampling, things like that. That accounts for about 25% of the loss for the total production of the plant. So if we want to keep 50% for that, that plant's vigor and health, we need to account for that other 25%. The other 25% of that total production is what we're going to actually use to calculate the stocking rate. So that, that's what we call a 25% harvest efficiency. Okay. So <clears throat> when we select, let's say for example in this, this uh, example we got 4,000 pounds of production. We're going to leave 2,000 for, for plant health. 1,000 of that's going to be lost to these envir other environmental losses. And 1,000 pounds is what we're going to set our stocking rates on. Okay. So that's really how you calculate the supply. Um, we've measured off our acre, we've made our calculations, we've determined what percentage of that, that total for production is going to be our allowable. And, uh, and from that point on, we can talk about animal demand. Okay. okay, so when you're figuring these stocking rates and you're getting the supply, how many of these plots, these one yard by one yard plots, do you take and what time of the year would be best to, to get this data? Well, we certainly don't want to take one sample. Um, anytime we can have a, a greater sample size, we're gonna we're gonna reduce the error that we have. So uh, we wanna we wanna look at a site that's representative for the for the pasture. So as we look out across this pasture, we want to find a site that's that's not producing the least amount of forage, but it's also not producing the most amount of forage, and we want to sample across those units. So. So I'm going to say maybe 10 would work, maybe 5 would work. It depends on where you are, but we don't want to take just one. If you take multiple samples and you get multiple production levels, you average those. So that's just, again, a simple, easy way. There's a lot of other complicated ways to do that and determine supply. That's an easy one that, that doesn't take a lot of time. Another one that doesn't take a lot of time is uh, actually uh, is pretty useful on, on, say, Bermuda grass and things like that is actually using this as a, and looking at the height, typically about 230 pounds per inch on Bermuda grass will, will, will be a rough estimate of, of production on Bermuda grass. We really don't get into that, that height determination for production on, on range grasses for two reasons. Number one, we have such variability across a rangeland site due to the diverse plants that make it up, make up the site. Um, and two, the differences in the, the physiology and the growth forms of the plants, they're different. They produce different pounds per inch. So we really can't use that as an estimation tool on rangeland. Okay. And so from the standpoint of, of when should when should we uh, do this, we're right here. We're in the middle of summer. It's, it's July 1st. Um, typically, if you look at the growth curves of how these, these warm season plants produce in this part of Texas, Typically, by about July the 15th, we produce 70% of the forage that we're going to produce for the year. Okay, so you can kind of look at that and, and, and tell, you know, we've got set, we should have 70% of the production, we've got 30% to go. So, when I come out and I do my estimations, I either want to be somewhere in the middle of the growing season, June 1st to July 1st, 
July 15th, somewhere in that in that midsummer range, or I want to do it at the end of the growing season. So if I do it in the middle, that's going to give me a, a, a mid-year look at what my production has, has give, given the amount of rainfall that I've received. But if I look at, say, November 15th, when we have our first frost, that tells me two things. It can tell me how much production that I've, I've used or have over the year, but it also tells me how much how much standing forage I've got to make it through the winter until next spring. So the middle of the summer or the end of the growing season, those are the two times that I would look at maybe adjusting stocking rates and looking at, at, looking at some of these forage levels. 